Everybody's a suspect. Coming to get you, Barbara. Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some things that you might have missed from the final trailer for Halloween Ends. Now I did do a live stream and it was almost two hours long and I was just trying to break down the trailer. But there are some things, like I said, I would have noticed that I have noticed. And I know that a lot of people don't want to watch a two hour video on a trailer breakdown especially a trailer that's only two minutes long. So I'm going to do a condensed version of that today. So I'm going to include some things that I've already spoken about, as well as some things that myself or you guys might have missed. So one of the important uh, topics that we spoke about was how and when Corey got in the sewer. Now, there are some screenshots that I've taken of what looks to be the outside of one of the, the tubes, the tunnels that leads you in to where Michael Myers is living or has been living over the past four years. Now there is a few scenes of Corey in the TV spots but there's also scenes of Corey in the day and also at night time when he's been confronted by Michael Myers. Now obviously when he's down in the sewers we don't 100% know if it's day or night but there is a scene in the TV spot where he comes out at night time. So I think Corey has made more than one visit to see Michael Myers. The first visit might have been accidental but the second visit where it looks like he's during the day, making his way back in, seems to be his second visit. You can see on his face where he's got a cut on his face and his hand might be wounded as well. So I think he's maybe going back, not for more punishment, but to maybe speak to Michael. I don't know if Michael's going to interact with him, but the whole scene with him and Michael Myers, that looked to be the first scene, was quite terrifying to see in the trailer. But I think he escapes from what we saw in the TV spots and he's going back maybe to speak to Michael, whether Michael speaks to him or not, but maybe he's going back to Michael to say, I know where Alison is, I know where Laurie is, come and follow me. Now I did mention this scene that looks a lot like Halloween 5 with the, the whole introduction to the Thorn cult, hopefully, and I doubt that's going to happen, hopefully it's not going to happen, um, but this knife, it's all, doesn't seem to be a lot of blood on it, if there is any blood, maybe dried blood over the years, but some people mentioned that he, Michael Myers is picking up the, the knife almost like it's, he's not going to try and kill um, Corey, almost like he's given the knife to Corey and um, if he's given the knife to Corey then perhaps he's also given the mask to Corey as well. Now we do see a scene in the trailer where Corey's holding a mask so that could be him coming out of the tunnels to show that he is going to be a copycat killer or if not a killer just a copycat to scare people uh, and to try and make people believe that Michael Myers is still alive. Now I'm going to talk about this scene again because it is the best scene for me in the trailer and I hope that we see more of this in the trailer and that's with Laurie looking out of the window and from what she could probably see is Michael Myers hiding behind the bush and then disappearing in front of her eyes and I did mention this before that in the original movie where he disappears in front of her eyes, we don't see it but she sees it I don't think that was what was supposed to have happened at the time. I think it was just bad directing by John Carpenter at the time where he disappeared in front of her eyes and the editing was just not great. But this one, because after 40 years, after 44 years, we've come to love that scene in the original that they're kind of incorporating that into the movie, that suspense-like figure that's just disappearing into mid-air, into thin air. So she's looking out and then we see the bush. We don't see what she's seeing. Maybe we do in the final cut of the film, but in the trailer we don't see what she's seeing. And I think that scene is just so beautiful because it shows the power of what Michael Myers has been, the shape, the boogeyman over the last 40 plus years. Now this scene at first I thought was her either picking up or putting down a glass of wine or a glass of water, but I don't think that's what it is. It looks like it could be glass of some sort that she's putting down quietly and she wants to trap or catch either Michael Myers or the copycat because like I said before I think she knows there's a copycat killer and we'll talk about that more in the video but this looks to me like it could be a trap that she's setting. This guy here I don't know if he's got a big part to play or a small part to play I do think he's a little bit dodgy I did see him in a couple of the TV spots sitting down 
uh, being confronted by someone that looks to be Michael Myers that I don't think it is. And I think he sees that it's Corey. I think it's Corey's friend. And Corey looks at him and says, I'm only having a joke. It's me, it's not Michael Myers. And maybe the two of them go around trying to scare people. That's my thought. It might not be the case, but I think this boy is going around helping Corey. I don't think he's dressed up. I don't think he's going to dress up as Michael Myers, but I think he's maybe trying to help Corey uh, scare people at least. He's got a gun there. So also, there is a scene in the, the one of the TV spots where he's trying to get help from a guy who's sitting in some sort of room or some sort of booth. This guy, we'll talk about soon. I think that other guy who he's talking to has got a big part to play as well. He might be the guy who goes down into the sewers, who is confronted by Michael Myers. And we see him here. I initially thought that might be Hawkins. It might still be. I can't see who it is. But it could be the guy who is maybe trying to help this boy. But in actual fact, this boy is luring this guy into the sewers to be confronted by Michael Myers. I did mention here, I don't think it is a tribute to Halloween H2O, but to me it reminds me of Ronnie being in his little security booth with Michael Myers walking past him, uh, past the window while he's talking to his wife. But we know that this is the radio DJ who obviously dies in the movie. This girl here, we already know that she dies, who is absolutely stunning by the way. Um, she lives in a really beautiful house. She's obviously a rich person, whether she's the rich one or her husband is the rich one, but we do see a dead body turn up in her swimming pool, a man with grey hair, so he seems to be a little bit older than her. Maybe she is a younger wife of this guy. And this could be Dr. Mathis. Maybe he's not got a big part to play. Maybe he's just a throwaway character, but if there is a Dr. Mathis, I think this guy might be Dr. Mathis. It would also explain why they live in a nice house because he's a rich guy. So she might be the wife of Dr. Mathis. I like how she slumped over in this scene because this is how I would imagine someone who gets stabbed against a wall would be sitting. They wouldn't sit like Bob did in Halloween from 1978. This is how they would look. And obviously Michael looking at her as well like he did to Bob all those years ago is very eerie. I like how we see in the trailer that Michael is stalking his victims. You can see he's stalking Laurie in this one. And that's what I want to see. I said that before, I want to see more stalking in this film. Less kills or less bloody kills, which we'll still get, but I want to see more of that stalking aspect of Michael Myers. And my wish has been fulfilled because that's what seems to happen in the trailer. And if we see it happen in the trailer, hopefully we see more of it in the movie. In the teaser trailer, we see Laurie point her gun at the copycat. But in this one, she, we can see that she fires the gun and again, I don't know if she actually thinks that this is Michael Myers or she knows it's the copycat. Maybe she knows it is the copycat and she wants that person to die as well because she's gone a little bit crazy and maybe she thinks whoever's trying to be a copycat killer has got no hope in life, so they deserve to die as well. This is the guy I'm talking about. He does look like the guy who was sitting in the booth. He's got that kind of dark skin and the, the moustache. It looks like here, I don't know if it's maybe camera trickery, but that looks to be him. And obviously Michael Myers comes out and probably kills him. This is that dodgy boy again. Again, I don't know if he's gonna be a bad guy or if he's gonna be one of the victims of either Michael or Corey. But again, we did see that scene with him sitting down with Corey standing up or Michael Myers standing up above him. And you can see the girl in the background stuck between the, the fence there. Now we do get that fence scene again with a blowtorch. Is that going to be Michael Myers or Corey or a, co a copycat that's going to kill this girl that's lying underneath the fence? Possibly. But this scene of the, the boy standing there above the girl at the fence, is he there ready to help or is he just about to be killed? Here you've got a shot of the little boy who's probably the first boy to die in the film. Don't know if you'll see it on screen or if he does even die, but we do hear that Corey gets blamed for the death of a, a little boy that he babysits. And this is obviously most likely that little boy. I know that people say that this can't be Michael Myers because of the way he tries to wriggle out of being tied down by Laurie Strode. Now Laurie does look confident in this scene and she looks like maybe she knows it's a copycat killer. But when she reveals the person in this scene, when she pulls the mask off, you can't see who it is. But the only scene and screenshot that I got is of a person that could still be Michael Myers, he's got that older person's look, unless it's not Michael Myers, unless it's possibly Nick Castle, 
because it looks like it's got the same kind of nose shape as Nick Castle. I may be looking into it too much, but I don't think that's a younger person. I think that is an older person that we're looking at. So like I did mention, guys, the, the final trailer is just a, a combination of all the TV spots that have either been leaked or officially released. There's been about 20 of them. And it looks like just an amalgamation of all the trailers, all the TV spots put together and just carefully placed into a final trailer. I still love the trailer. I still love the final trailer. It doesn't give anything more away than what we already knew from what we saw in the TV spots and the first trailer. So overall, it was a fantastic trailer. Um, if I've missed anything else out, guys, then please let me know. I haven't spoken about everything in this video because I did speak at length for almost two hours with the breakdown. So if you really want to torture yourself, guys, then please watch the, the trailer breakdown that I've done. But this, this video is just a kind of condensed version of the breakdown that I've done, removing most of the things that we've already spoken about time and time again, and just getting into the things that we may have missed or things that we think could be the case. For example, the Dr. Mathis situation or Corey's friend who might be helping Michael, who might be helping Corey, who might just be a victim. But anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.